children and welcome back to our online classes. Today we are going to learn yet another ornamental lesson. Ornamental, figurative, something which makes your communication skills much more interesting and much more decorative that is figurative. So today we are going to learn about the figures of speech. What do you understand by the figures of speech? A figure of speech is a word or phrase using figurative language, language that has other meaning than its normal definition. A figure of speech is a word or phrase that possesses a separate meaning from its literal definition. This allows us to be creative and lively in our own in our expression. So, the figures of speech make our expression much more creative and lively. So, it is advised that we use figures of speech in our writing skills. Got it children? And you might have learnt few figures of speech in your previous classes like the similes, the metaphors and the personification mostly when you learn your poems. Now what are the top figures of speech? Now if you, you might have uh, heard this kind of conversation but might have been unaware that these are the figures of speech, right? Like for example, see here, say uh, it's the beginning of the end for us, ain't it? So beginning and end, both are opposites, so it's an oxymoron. Time sure runs quick. So the time is given the human qualities. So here it's a personification. Or here he says here, talking me to death, Jane. So it's a hyperbole, exaggerating the things. And as fast as an arrow. So it's a simile. And I'm all ears. That is, it is a metonymy. These are the different figures of speech that you're going to learn today. So these figures of speech, there is a simple way to just a small acronym to just remember some of the figures of speech like shampoo. So where S stands for simile, S, H stands for hyperbole and A stands for alliteration, assonance or anaphora, M stands for metaphor and P stands for personification or pun and O stands for onomatopoeia and O again stands for oxymoron and repeatedly I repeat simile, hyperbole, alliteration, metaphor, personification, onomatopoeia and oxymoron. So I am repeating it so that you all understand it very very clearly that the how the, the acronym shampoo has come up that is simile, hyperbole, alliteration, metaphor, personification, onomatopoeia and oxymoron. Got it children? Hope it's very clear to you. Then we'll talk about a simile. A simile is a figure of speech that directly compares two things using words such as like and as. Example, he is as funny as a monkey. So here he is compared with the monkey. So his being funny is compared with, the, with monkey using as. So it is a direct comparison. As cool as a cucumber. He looks like a fish out of water. So the comparison is with he, the comparison he and fish. These are compared using the word like. Her eyes shone like diamonds. So the shining of her eyes is being compared with that of diamonds. Is it not? As playful as a kitten. Once again this is a simile. So the simile directly compares two things using words such as like and as. One more example, as tall as a giraffe. So you might have already learned the simile in your previous classes, is it not children? Okay, so these are some of the examples which make it clear about 
the use of a simile. Got it, children? He is as funny as a monkey, as cool as a cucumber. He looks like a fish out of water. Her eyes shone like diamonds. Next, we'll talk about a metaphor. So, what is a metaphor? A thing regarded as representative or symbolic of something else. So, it is also a comparison, but directly you compare without using the words as and like. For example, so you can say that he is a shining star. So he is compared directly to a shining star. So it is a hidden comparison between two things that are unrelated but which share some common characteristics. So here the star and he, these are unrelated but they, they are compared because the characteristic of shining is similar in both. Okay, then life is a journey. So, life is directly compared with journey. Children are flowers grown in concrete garden. So, children are directly compared with flowers. So, this is what is a metaphor. A metaphor is also a comparison like a simile, but it is a hidden comparison which shows directly what the other person is or what the other thing is. Clear children? Now, we will talk about the alliteration. So, what is an alliteration? The occurrence of the same letter or consonant sound in successive or closely associated syllables within groups of words is called as alliteration. She sells seashells on the seashore. The shells she sells are seashells. I am sure for if she sells seashells on the seashore, then I am sure she sells seashore shells. So, what is this? It's a tongue twister, is it not? You might have learned tongue, tongue twisters. You just enjoy the tongue twisters, is it not? One more tongue twister for you. The terrible tiger tore the towel. So, this is one more tongue twister. So, in most of the tongue twisters, the occurrence of the same consonant sound or the same letter uh, very successively or closely with the uh, syllables within the group of words. So, you, you feel the repetition of a consonant sound. So, that is here the sound S. The consonant sound S is repeated. Is it not? In the next example, the consonant sound of T is repeated. So, terrible, tiger, tor, towel. So, T is repeated. So, this is what is alliteration all about. Then we will talk about the assonance. Assonance is also the repetition of the sound, but it is a repetition of the vowel sound. Okay. Assonance is a resemblance in the sounds of words or syllables, either between their vowels or between their consonants. So, you see here the example. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. So, the vowel a, a sound is repeated in all the, in this example. So, alliteration and assonance both show the repetition of the sound of the consonants or the vowels between the consonants. Let's look at an example here. She sells seashells by the seashore. This is what I have already told. And I am also giving you an example of an oxymoron. Oxymoron like a passive aggressive which shows the opposites. Okay. And a pun. Pun is something which is something like a joke or sarcastic. Okay. Reading while sunbathing makes you well read. Well read means here they mean that reading well read. R-E-A-D, red. But here red means when you sit under the sun, you become red. So that is what is uh, a pun. A humor in it. Okay. More examples of assonance are we light fire on the mountain. I feel depressed and wrestle. So E sound is repeated. I sound is repeated. Go and mow the lawn. O is repeated. Johnny went here and there and everywhere. So E is repeated. The engineer held the steering to steer the vehicle. So E is repeated. Is it not? So well, next we will talk about the anaphora. 
Anaphora is the use of an expression. So something is repeated, an expression is repeated whose interpretation depends upon another expression in the context. Same word is used in the consecutive lines again and again. I want my right here, right now, all right. So the word right is repeated. Okay, two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both and be traveler long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. So here the word and 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 is repeated. Is it not? One more example. Reach for a leaf, reach for a uh, chief, reach for a sky of blue. So here reach is repeated. So this is this repetition is called as an anaphora. Now we'll talk about personification. So the attribution of a personal nature or human characteristics to something non-human, to inanimate objects, you can say, or abstract things. Uh, so giving the human qualities to abstract things or inanimate objects is called as personification. Mostly you see the use of personification in most of the poems. Okay, look at this example. So this pencil is personified here. Personification occurs when a thing or abstraction is represented as a person. Use a verb to give an object human qualities. So whenever we give um, human qualities, we use some action words with it. So whenever we use action words with the inanimate objects, which generally action words which refer to humans only, then it becomes a personification got it for example the wind yells while blowing so yell is something related to humans and it is given to inanimate objects already i explained you in the chapter of selfish jain that the entire chapter is about personification is it not the wind cannot yell only a living thing can yell therefore here the wind is personified the moon was resting in the midnight sky. So the moon is personified as it says that it is resting, whereas only humans rest. Okay, then we'll talk about the hyperbole. So here we say that a hyperbole is the use of exaggeration as a figure of speech. In poetry and oratory, it emphasizes, evokes strong feelings and creates strong impressions let us look at an example figurative the backpack weighs a ton means ton means really is it a ton have you weighed it so what you really what you really want to say is it is very heavy the literal meaning is the backpack it feels very heavy so to show that in an exaggerated manner we say that it almost weighs a ton See how creative uh, your language becomes when you use the figures of speech. Is it not? One more. Uh, so we say that uh, the world, uh, the, this, the word of this week, you should remember, it is hyperbolic. That is exaggeration. So remember this word as the hyperbole as the word of this week. And start using this in your day-to-day uh, -day, uh, communication skills. So next we'll learn about the pun. So what do you mean by pun? Pun is nothing but a play on words on various meanings. It's a word to give a different sense to the sentence, comical, nonsensical, illogical and ridiculous. So it's all about fun, how you play with words. It's a form of word play that exploits multiple meanings of a term or of similar sounding. If you look at this example, it will uh, make you very, very clear. I get to confused. So confused, confused it is given. Confused. So confused is written as confused. So here the picture of con is written wrong. Uh, when do I go wrong? I get to I get confused. So confused is so confused is written as confused. So the con has got fused like a bulb. That is how it has been shown here. Well, that is uh, a play with words. Is this real life or is this just fantasy? So fantasy. Fantasy, the word fantasy is written as fantasy. So the picture of fanta is given and with C is given. So it's just how you play with the words. 
mostly you see people those who have humor those who are very humorous generally use pun in their language uh, there is no point anymore so point does not mean that the pencil doesn't have point point here means that there is no argument anymore there is no discussion or no argument anymore and here you see what do you mean i am not a bear i have all the qualifications so here koala qualifications here means this is a koala so here it is qualifications nothing but the word qualification is written in that manner so just see how we play with the words to bring out some humor comedy or being nonsense or ridiculous with the words okay now we'll talk about the onomatopoeia so what is onomatopoeia common onomatopoeias include animal noises such as oink meow roar and chirp so onomatopoeia is a word or group of words that when spoken aloud imitates the sound it produces so the word which is pronounced and the real sound which it makes are similar so let us look at some examples after this the bridge collapsed creating a tremendous boom so the word boom is a onomatopoeic word because the sound boom and the word boom are similar okay onomatopoeia is extremely useful in written english because it helps authors to describe sounds accurately okay and makes writing much more lively and interesting okay so the common onomatopoeias include the animal noises most of the animal noises are uh, the onomatopoeic words is it not hope it is clear to you okay then we we'll learn about an example a word onomatopoeia is nothing but a word that imitates the sound it represents is it not like pop boom splashy these are some of the examples see here boom wow oops splash is zap pow crash smash yeah wow all these are bang all these are the onomatopoeic words now we'll talk about the oxymoron and why are oxymorons important they allow us to be creative in our descriptions an oxymoron is a term for a figure of speech and it's made up of two or more words that seem to be opposite to each other or actually they are opposite or contradictory two contradictory words are written together for example big baby so big when you say big how it can be baby open secret so when you say secret how it can be open so these are the contradictory words passive aggressive original copy when you say original then how copy alone together okay deafening silence clearly confused when you are clear how you will be confused living dead when you are living how you will be dead so these are called oxymorons are the contradictory words used to be creative tell the intensity of the thing okay so with this almost we have come to an end of our today's chapter hope you have understood the few of the figures of speech and remember them with the acronym shampoo is it clear so what each letter stands in the word shampoo if you can remember that then you are done with your entire figures of speech thank you children and have a good day